S. <laughs> Anna Bennett visits my malicious site because I, I basically missed her. And she trusted me because I was someone else after I broke his PhD sessions. Now, she visits my malicious site, and this triple XSS scans the local network, her lo local network, for the type of router she's using. How does it do that? It's actually really simple. This is old info. Um, create an iframe, for example, this is just one way of doing it, there are many. Create your iframe, make it hidden, and you point to an internet URL, basically a local, uh, local IP on your network, something that I can never access, but you as a client within your NAT can access. So it's a 192.168 address, for example. Now I'm hitting here, set up about CGI, and I do an onload. What this says is, if I can hit this, if your browser, Anna, can hit this URL, that means you probably have a built-in router. Well, if you can't hit that, you'll never hit my onload JavaScript. What if I can hit this 192.168.11 index.cgi? It's probably running a FIOS router, for example. The list goes on. So you can basically detect any HTTP HTTP-based router. All right, that's cool. What next? Well, do any of you, are, are any of you who have routers or have people who have routers and they're like, you know, I never really changed the admin credentials because the only way to get onto my routers, you have to be either physically plugged in, so you're either in my house or my dungeon downstairs or wherever you guys have, and or you know my WPA password, for example. Uh, hopefully not my password. So how are they going to be able to access you know, my internet? They're not going to, they're not going to be able to log in. So they don't set, you know, they don't change admin admin or fit my favorite password change me. Um, and they just leave it for the router. I'm not talking about WPA, I'm talking about admin credentials for your router. Well, what if you visit a malicious website? And it detects what router you have, and then again creates a form and then submits. You can now log into someone's router. You can log into the router with their default credentials, even though you're not on the network, you don't have access to their network, all you're doing is their, their web browser is propelling this vulnerability and basically propelling this exploit for you. <laughs> Pretty cool. Now, this isn't necessarily necessary in our geolocation triple XSS attack. <laughs> so, what happens? Anna visits the site. We scan for the router type. If necessary, depending on the router, we may need to log, try to log in. We may not even need to log in at all. Then we XSS the router. All right. So we're going to XSS the router and load remote malicious JavaScript. So, for example, this is a real exploit on BIOS routers, where it uh, hits an XSS and then it accesses a remote URL with JavaScript. Accesses that JavaScript. What's that JavaScript do? Well, being a router. You have a MAC address. Your every network device has a MAC address, and that's it's similar to an IP address, basically the unique identifier for the piece of hardware that you have. Now, the MAC address typically is not a big deal. Knowing that MAC address, it's not big information. It's kind of like knowing an IP address. It just tells you sort of where something is. You can't really communicate with anything by a MAC address on the internet. You can only do that internally on your network, uh, in general. Now, we use this remote JavaScript to basically access a local page on the router, uh, basically a system information page, for example. So what we'll do is we'll use this uh, Ajax thing I learned about a couple years ago, accidentally, and we will access the system info and pull the MAC address and then send it to me. So Anna visits the website, loads this malicious JavaScript, it accesses your know, router's MAC address and sends it directly to me. All right. That's nice, but why MAC address? Like, what's so cool about that? All right, so if you don't know, just ping it, right? Here, I'll help you. Open your browser, type www.bing.com, all right? When the search box opens, type in Google. <laughs> and hit enter, OK? I'll, I'll wait.
what it does is it tracks you wherever you go. This one right there. Look. Thank you, look. You guys know Street View. You know, you go to Google Maps and uh, you type in a you type in an address, Planned Parenthood, and you go and you say, oh, uh, you, know, you can see Street View. Yeah, it's on that side of the street. You know exactly where it is. Well, these cars, what they do is they go around. It's really interesting. When I'm driving, I hate to meet this guy, driving down every single street in America. And as they're doing that, they're taking pictures all over. It's really a guy holding a camera. You think you're boring. Ooh, America. And as they're doing this, one thing people don't really know is they're also watching Wi-Fi. Now, recently, a big Wi-Fi Google thing came up that you guys may have heard of. Basically, they were, uh, they were getting all this unencrypted information accidentally. See when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> and they were storing it. Oops. I had no idea we had hit a bunch of information on here. Um, and that became a big thing, but that's actually not what we're going to be looking at. I'm not worried about that data that they were finding on unencrypted networks. I care about the data they were finding on encrypted networks. While they're driving, not only are they taking pictures, they're doing something else. They're watching the Wi-Fi networks, and they're watching the Wi-Fi packets. And within the Wi-Fi packets are your MAC address, so specifically the MAC address of the router, right? The device that we just acquired recently. Now, if you remember, well, actually, as they're driving, they're also tracking GPS. GPS is very accurate. Another cool thing about Wi-Fi is their signal strength. You can know how strong something is whether you get closer to it or whether you get further to it. If you have an iPhone, for example, there are five bars, and using an iPhone, you'll only ever have one or two in America. <laughs> so you know whether you're closer to that, uh, to that signal or not. Um, it's really weird. Here at Black Hat, I have five bars. I don't know why. I'm not sure what's going on. The quality is crystal clear, though. So what they're doing is they're actually tracking these Wi-Fi MAC addresses, the MAC address of your router. They're driving down the street, and they're saying, ooh, I see a signal. You know, that, that network says Linksys. But it's kind of far. The signal is maybe a 10 out of 100. They're driving further and further down the street. Oh, it's 50 out of 100. They drive further and further. Now it's 90 out of 100. You must be really close to that signal. Now it's going less. Now it's back to 80. Using very simple triangulation, they're determining exactly where that router is. And then as they go to the next street, they can, again, they're getting more signal strength information. And literally, they're doing triangulation to determine where your MAC address is. Now, how do you access this information? If you've been using Firefox, I'm not sure uh, if anyone can see this, but there's something called location services in Firefox. It's, uh, it's a feature that you can use JavaScript and determine where someone is. Now, don't worry too much. What happens is, if you go to a page that attempts to access this information, It'll ask you. It's nice. It'll, you'll have a little bar that says, "Do you want this information? Or this website is trying to get information about your location. Would you like to share it?" Most of you would click no, uh, unless you want to meet single girls tonight, in which case you might click yes. So the problem is, I'm never going to get Anna to click that information, click that box. Uh, I tried. She didn't. So what's something else we can do? Well. If you, uh, if you actually look at what's going on, when you click that button, share location, Firefox, what it's doing is make a HTTPS request to Google, because they know everything. And at that point, it sends the router information. Firefox is actually built so that it has code that determines uh, the MAC address of your router, your gateway, and also any other routers that it sees. And it sends that to Google. And then Google responds, oh, here are the coordinates. Now again, this isn't very helpful to us because we can't be very malicious about it because it's going to ask us. Now, that's only if we don't know the MAC address. We know the MAC address. If you recall, Anna sent her sent me her MAC address as she visited my malicious site. My malicious site with a triple XSS, which then looked for any router on her network, determined the type of router, potentially logged in, Use the XSS, access the remote malicious JavaScript, which sent an AJAX request to the router, got the MAC address, sent it to me to remote URL, 
Now I have her MAC address. I then take that URL, I connect to Google, I send this response, I include her MAC address, and now I get her coordinates. Her exact coordinates. Jack Bauer triangulation type. <laughs> Tell me where Anna Ferris is. That's exactly what he said. This is how accurate this is, by the way. This is where Anna Ferris is. I took Anna Ferris' location, right here, that uh, blue, blue circle. I'm serious now. This is, this is actual exploitation of this. And then I compared it to the actual address, where she really was. Driving directions to Casa Ferris. 30 feet. 30 feet. I looked over at the router. It was 30 feet away. I'm serious. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, no, th this is actually a router that I exploited. And it literally told me the router was 30 feet away from me. I went to this web malicious website that I set up without doing anything else, and it told me exactly where I was. Exactly. This is geolocation just gone terrible. <laughs> Privacy is dead, people. I'm sorry. 